So next up, we want to animate the character. So we've got the animation sprites here, a kind of fast walking, not exactly running pug, but we can work on the actual animations afterwards. But the point is we want to get now these eight frames animated. I mentioned before, in order to do that, inside the tile set and tile map, the tile map would require every frame. So in order to generate this now, the only thing that was on the internet at the moment was a script that I shared called GB export, but it didn't do frames. So it was pretty much pointless. So I've gone ahead and edited this script, fixed a load of bugs, and it now supports every frame. So it'll export all the frames in one. As you will see, it will also comment what frames are and what tiles are for visual reference. And it fixed a bug with it not exporting the right tiles if you had multiple, as well as when you export now, if you go scripts, GB export, all you have to do is select a file name, and it will actually use that file name, whereas the code before didn't. And then it will export, you know, what you see. So it's just basically a bunch of cleanup and work and some support now for all frames. So make sure to re-import that on yours. Just go scripts, open scripts folder and replace this with the new one. And now we need to basically change the frames. So the tile map every time a frame changes. So for that, we are going to need some new properties and character. So we'll need to keep track of if we are flipping the sprite or not. So at the minute we can have sprite flipped X indicates if the sprite is flipped in the X axis. And then same for Y. And let's just make a helper function for that as well called set sprite flip. It will need the character as a pointer. We'll just need a, you can use a Boolean if you want, but it's just an ugly type def compared to uint at the minute. So we'll just use a uint, which is overkill, but it just acts as a zero or one. And we'll do flip X and we'll also do flip Y. And that's pretty simple to do. We just want to, for now, set the character's actual properties for flipped X or flipped Y. And then we want to update the frame so we have a load frame sprite let's make one that just calls refresh frame or refresh sprite so that any properties that have changed on the character can be passed through and that's as simple as just doing what we already do somewhere in here which is load sprite frame or something what do we call it yeah load sprite it must be in here Load sprite frame, first frame. That's the only place we actually call that at the moment. Ah, this is the initialization as well. So you do still want to do load. So it actually sets zero. And then when we come to update flipped characteristics, we'll just want to do the refresh sprite. And the job of refresh sprite is to simply set the, um, well, basically do the load sprite frame and the character and just pass in the character's current uh, frame. So you don't have to mess with you know, passing this longer winded version in. So it's just kind of a helper method. So now what we'll have to do is inside of load sprite frame, actually support flipping and reading and writing these values. But before we do the flipping, we might as well do the actual animation first. So if we go back to movement physics, the first thing we'll want to update is we have a frame count here, which is directly related to the movement. So we'll actually call this movement frame count because that won't be related to animation specifically, because if we want to move faster, but the animation needs to run slower, we need two counters. So let's increase that now and make another counter, which is gonna do exactly the same thing, but we can control the count completely different. So we'll have an animation frame counter as well. We'll update everywhere we had the old frame counter, and that's that updated. And now let's just also reset the animation frame counters just the same. They're just they're basically going to both reset at the same points when things like moving left and right or stopping and starting happen, but they'll be counting up to a higher number or a different number. We have moving, but what we currently don't have is the direction. We also have this here. We called it player one animation frames, but now it's more appropriate to be called movement frames. It's sort of the number of frames we do the entire movement speed calculation over. So we'll just call this... Uh, movement frame length, I think is what makes sense. And then we'll need the same thing again for the animation frame length. So how many frames need to tick over before we progress the animation by one? 
So if we set this to uh, 1, which we could start with, it'll run at literally 60 frames a second. Set it to it to be 30 frames a second, for example. So it slows down the higher you make this number. Now, if we go to where we incremented the frame count and roll to the next frame, we can just call this collectively progress counter movement counter and copy and paste this and do exactly the same just for the animation frame counter. So nothing special here, just multiple counters. And this wants to reset when we have the animation frame length hit. So same thing, that's just going to count up in this case to one. So reset every single time. The other one's counting up to nine. We now have two counters that we can make use of. And the one extra thing in here is every time we do overlap and reset, we literally want to update the animation. So move to the next frame. So for that, we can call, um, we'll make a helper function actually that says load next frame instead of just the first one, which is similar to refresh, but uh, load next sprite frame. And it'll take care of wrapping around the frames as well. So we want to set the new frame. So set next frame. And this is where we want to wrap around. So the characters current frame equals. So it's the characters uh, current frame plus one. But then if we do a remainder of the total frames, it will effectively wrap around. So this will add up to from zero to eight because sprite counts as nine. And then once we are at nine, it will be set to zero. So it'll only effectively count from zero to eight, which is what we want. And also in our case, I've actually only got eight frames. So let's just update that before I forget, which is in main setup. Uh, oh, we need to update that there as well, which is actually nothing to do with that variable anymore. So we'll set that to eight. So this would then add up from zero to seven. And after that, you just need to call load sprite frame character. And the, in fact, you've also got it already set. Yeah, it's already set. So we can just call refresh uh, sprite. And it will now just pull in the current sprite frame because refresh sprite will just um, call in the character with the current frame and then all boils down to one function. So that then, if we go to there, we can do load next sprite. Pass in the plate one. And that will now move to next animation. And if all that's done right, we should have animation. Load sprite frame 57. So this will probably be an ordering. Yep, yeah, because load sprite frame is below. Refresh sprite. So both of these are going to have to be after load sprite frame. And again, like I say, this is where when we do an actual header class and a C class, this problem will go away. There we go. And there's a pug animating, which you can see is too fast. And obviously we don't flip yet, but there's an animation of a really fast walking pug. So let's do one thing first, and that's to slow down the animation. So we'll change this to two. There we go, that's nice. That's probably about right. We can still walk on water. We still have superpowers. And now we just need to add the ability to flip. So first we need to flag when we're changing direction. And to do that, we just need to check if we uh, weren't moving, or at least if we weren't moving, it was the other direction. So let's do right first. So if the previous movement was to the left or static, so minus one or more, or zero and the character's current um velocity not velocity movement force maybe no velocity velocity makes more sense because that's the direction we're physically eh, i don't know no we'll do movement because say you get blown back by wind or something and you're still trying to push to the right but the wind's blowing you backwards to the left you don't really want to be pushed facing the other way if your movement force is going the opposite so we'll follow movement force in this case so if you're movement force is trying to move uh, greater than zero that will indicate a right hand so normal non-flipped movement and i think we already did the method to set the flip didn't we what did we call it set sprite flip so set sprite flip character as it character 
Oh yeah, we've already got character half us player one and somewhere down here, didn't I? Yeah. That's wrong. Characters there. Set sprite flip, pass the character in. The X flip wants to be nothing, the Y flip wants to be nothing. And in this case, we're constantly just setting the Y to not flipped, which I can't see as ever flipping upside down. Uh, sprite flip for moving right. And then you're never going to have both equal at the same time, so we can do an alsive sprite flip for moving to the left. And this just needs to be the exact opposite, so greater than or equal to zero. And movement force is moving in the negative direction. So this is a left movement, and in which case we want to flip the sprite. So the only magic left now is to actually listen to and work with the sprite flipped properties that are now set when we're moving left and right. So in order to flip a sprite, all we have to do is um, set sprite properties. And you can do set sprite prop, pass the character in, and now you need the properties. The properties are, for example, here s flip x and y. So we can just do checking if the character is flipped in the x. If it is, flip the x. If it's not, pass zero. Wrap that in parentheses. Do an all because we are doing a flag style of integer. So the add up together when you all them. And we'll do the same thing for the y direction. So that should flip the sprite left and right when we're moving. What else have we done wrong now? And uh, we passed something completely wrong apparently. 47. Uh, what have we passed wrong? Oh yeah, of course it's not character. Sprite ID at this point. Which we're using here. So let's just move that out. Make a variable here. Set to zero inside here. Set sprite ID. And now in here we can set the sprite ID. Try that again. And there you go. You can see we are flipping the pug perfectly. There's no bugs whatsoever and we're done. So no, we need to fix this. It's fairly obvious what's happening. The tile is made up of obviously six tiles. This one's flipping, that one's flipping, this one's flipping, that one's flipping. So not only do we need to flip the tile, we need to flip the index of which tile we're flipping. So if we look at here, for example, tile 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it'll be tile 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If we flip this tile, it needs to move over to the far side. And say this was four tiles, or in this case, say we were flipping in the y-axis, if we were to flip him upside down, it'd have to be 6, 4, 2, and not 2, 4, 6. So we basically need to flip uh, the x and y direction as well. So for that, we will need to keep track of the x and y, not just a counting up sprite count in total. So let's get rid of this and change it for 4, 2 loops. So we'll do for him, uh, y equals 0. y isn't equal to the character's uh, height. And then y plus plus. And then indent that. And we'll do the x, the x, and the x along with the width. So now we've got an x and y instead of just a count up. Loop x and y of sprite. And you can imagine what we're now trying to do is say this is the normal tile 0 1 2 3 4 5 and if we flip it in the x it needs to become 1 0 3 2 5 4 so you're moving this row and this row around so it's fairly obvious of what to do here all you have to do is if you are not flipping it's just the x and the y if you are it's going to be the entire width which would be 2 minus 1 to bring it into a 0 or 1 range and then minus the actual index so if we were at index 0 it would be 1 minus 0 which is 1 then when we get to number one, it would be one minus one, which is zero. If you do the same in the y axis and invert them, it will naturally add up correctly. So that's not that hard to do. We just need to calculate the x and y index now. So calculate indexes. Index for the x is, as we mentioned, if the character is flipped, then it will be the character's uh, width minus one minus 
the actual x position otherwise it's just going to be the x position do that for the y then if we're flipped in the y take the character's height and minus one and then minus y otherwise just keep it as y so now we have the index for x and y the sprite needs to be the same calculation we do which is the x plus the y times the sprites width and i think that is it we've now just got to fix the sprite tile position because we currently just have i and because we're going to reuse this logic let's just make that the uh, tile index i guess because we're going to reuse that the offset from sprite id to the correct tile we now use that here and we can now use it back in the tile map so now when we are setting the sprite id actually no that's completely wrong what am i thinking that would just reflip it again the tile index is specific to we are flipping the sprite so we're changing which sprite we're setting but in the tile map we need to still access the right tile otherwise we're going to access the flipped tile as well so that will be this logic but without the indexed version without the changed version so it will be the actual x and y not the indexed x and y not the changed x and y and then the frame offset as well so i think if we got that right we should now be indexing the correct tiles on flip there we go so now we have flipping of a meta sprite as well i think we need to run a bit faster i think this character just because of his posture and style we're probably just going to have movement running at exactly one frame so to do that in this logic here just so we've still got the logic i'm just going to put if false or if zero for now so it never runs and just comment out our code so we've always got the logic if we want to re-enable it otherwise we can't control the speed there we go it's nice and smooth now that seems about the right speed so it's not the fastest moving pug and we can probably change the animation maybe to make him look a bit faster um, but that's irrelevant the the animation side we can do separate so now we have the animation i guess we've got to do jumping and gravity and collision so that's it for this one guys and i'll catch you in the next